Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer, Ronix Fetanato, and this tutorial, I'll be showing how you can easily edit a photo in Photoshop from the very start to the very end. So simply like this video, don't forget to subscribe if at all you're watching, and you not yet subscribed yet to this channel, so do me a favor and hit the like button on this very video. So in order to import a photo into Photoshop, simply locate the image that you want to edit, and simply right click on the image, and simply select open with Photoshop, and select Photoshop. Or you can simply drag and drop it into Photoshop after opening up the Photoshop software. So I'll just come and select Adobe Photoshop for the image to load into Photoshop. So this is the photo that we want to edit right into Photoshop. So in order to edit the image into Photoshop, we want first of all correct the image regarding uh, removing the textures and smoothing out of the skin. And later on, we are going to be color grading this very image. So in order to edit the image, the very first thing I tend to do is cropping the image. So in order to crop the image, I'll come and select the crop tool right here and simply change the settings to 8 by 10 because I would love to post such an image to Instagram and simply hit enter or return in order to crop the image. So after cropping the image, the next thing is going to be retouching the image using frequency separation. Remember, frequency separation divides the image into the textures and the colors. So when you refine the textures alone and also refine the colors or the skin tones and you combine both layers, you end up a nice with a nicely edited image. So I'll just come right here to the background line, simply press Ctrl J or you can use Command J. So press Ctrl J twice and now simply double click right there, name this to low frequency and we're going to name the up layer to high frequency. So in the high frequency layer we have the textures. And in the low frequency layer, we have the colors. So as suggested here, the low frequency is for colors and the high frequency layer is for the texture. So I'm just going to come and turn this off. Select the low frequency layer, come to filter, come to blur and come down to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, simply take down the radius and choose an area on the skin. So I've chosen this as a reference point. So you have to choose the point of the skin whereby the textures or the skin details are prominent or visible enough. So left click on the radius slider and start taking it up. So left click and start taking up the radius slider. So we want to stop at the point whereby the textures are just starting to disappear from this very image. So just come and stop at 10 because that is when the textures or details are just starting to disappear from the image. And I'll just come and hit OK. Remember this is the most important step when it comes to editing using frequency separation so when you mess up on this step you are not going to be having the best results remember the higher the radius the more textures are going to be remaining with at the retouch process then the lower the radius the smoother the skin is going to be at the end of the editing process so make sure you perfect this step and hit ok select the high frequency layer in this case and now activate it then come right here to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image it is going to open up this the source is the name of the, the image the layer make sure you select the low frequency layer the channel has to be rgb the blending always has to be add if at all you're dealing with a 16-bit image the scale has to be 20 offset zero. so just type in two and zero right here the scale is two offset zero and turn on the invert option and you see the textures on this gray layer then if at all you are dealing with an 8-bit image if at all you have 8 right here simply use a blending of subtract the scale is to offset 128 or past 100% make sure that invert option is not turned on so for my case it is a 16-bit image I'll just change it back to 16-bit settings and simply hit OK come right here to where it says normal change it from normal and change it to linear like light linear light and you get back the image that it was meant to be so select both layers and press ctrl g on the keyboard to put this in a group so double click right there and what we want to do in this case we are going to rename that to frequency separation so after doing that just open up the frequency separation group and select the low frequency layer and the very first thing we want to do when it comes to editing or retouching using frequency separation is first of all working on the skin tones or skin color. So select the layer that is containing skin color and hide 
or deactivate the high frequency layer you are going to come to the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool and after getting the mixer brush tool simply set it right so just come and make sure the hardness is set to zero percent and soft round brush is selected then make sure clean brush is selected make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is selected this second option with a weight of nine percent load 75 percent mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent make sure sample order is not turned on and slightly zoom into the image so right now we just want to refine the smooth thing of the skin tones and blend the skin tones better so if i told the clones the mixer brush tool is showing a plus icon press the caps lock on the keyboard so to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard so in order to mix a given area left click and hold down and you mix that area just like that and mix that area just like that and to work on a new area left click and mix on a new area then release the left click button if at all you're working on a brand new area and where that color is transitioning from one color to another reduce on the size and mix the boundary to create a nice and smooth transition between those colors so i'll mix this highlight alone then mix this transition alone to create smoothness between the transitions so i'll just come to this highlight on the cheek area and blend that area just like that come to the shadows right here on the cheekbone and mix to blend that so I'll mix the shadows in those areas mix the highlight right there on the cheek area and when caps the nose I'll move the brush in an up down direction and mix the shadows along the nose area reduce on the size and mix this brightest point on the nose area so I'll just come and continue working and mixing and blending these areas just like that and you can see now the skin is looking nice and even so i'll continue working on these areas to perfect them better just like that mix mix and mix so i'll just come the lower part of the body especially the neck and mix the colors in the neck area remember you want perfect every area that is containing skin and blend the transitions between the skin color so just come this area and also blend just like that increase on the size if at all i'm working on a slightly bigger area and blend just like that and you can see how nice and smooth the skin has gotten to be and now the skin tones or the transitions between the skin tones are very nice and even so make sure that you work and perfect every single area that is containing all that has skin tones to blend and have the most perfect results at the end of uh, the process so right now we are done working on the skin tones just come and turn on the texture layer and you can so when you turn on the texture layer you'll still have the skin textures left intact so this is the before after select the texture or high frequency layer and simply come and get uh, the clone stamp tool make sure the settings are right hardness to zero percent soft round brush is selected the mode is set to normal opacity and flat 100 percent align is selected and make sure sample is set to current layer because we want to remove blemishes that are part of the high frequency layer now we're just going to come and zoom into the image by using control plus on the keyboard for mark it is command plus to zoom in and to remove a blemish you hold down the option key on the keyboard and you left click then for windows is the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on a clean area near the blemish and simply left click over the blemish to clean and eliminate it so if at all you have gotten lost you can simply rewind a few seconds and you can follow and understand how to use uh, the clone stamp tool better so I'll just come and clean up these blemishes and skin imperfections always take your time while cleaning up and removing the blemishes from the images because this contributes over 80 percent to your overall edited image so i'll just come and remove these blemishes 
quickly. So like I said, always take your time while trying to clean up and remove uh, the blemishes from your photos or your images. So I'm just going to clean up these blemishes. I'll just come to the lower part of the body and continue removing these tiny skin imperfections. So I'll zoom out and look at the image from a distance. So this is the before and after for the skin retouching. So let's color grade this very image. So in order to color grade, you are simply going to come to the adjustments and simply select gradient map. So when you select gradient map, it's going to apply any other random color over the image. So just come and hide the gradient layer by clicking on the eye icon and left click on the color option right there. Make sure the sample is set to 5x5 five five average. Then left click on this left hand pointer and left click on the color option and choose the darkest point of the skin tone. So by the way, if at all your tool is not working, just come and set this better. So just come back and hit cancel. So make sure this icon is selected and not the layer mask. That is why the brush was not able to sample. So let's do this once again. We hide the gradient map layer and simply left click on the color option. But we have selected the gradient icon. So left click on this pointer. Then left click on the color option and simply left click on the darkest point of the skin tone. Hit OK. Then left click on the brightest pointer right there. Then left click once again on the color option and click over the brightest point of the skin tone. Then you are going to click in the middle to create a mid-tone or the midpoint. Then type in the location to 50. Then left click on the color option and choose a mid-tone. So I'm just going to choose that as a mid-tone and hit OK. Then hit OK once again and now activate this layer. Come and change the blend mode from normal to color just like that select the white layer mask and simply press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard and after doing that simply right click and get the normal brush tool and simply set the hardness to zero so front brush is selected flat 100 percent and opacity 100 percent you have to zoom into the image i'm just going to hit enter then increase on the size of the brush so just come by using the brush tool I'll just come and paint on the skin just like that and you can see it is now going to color grade and create even skin color or even skin tones over the model skin so I'm just going to come and paint so take your time as you're trying to paint on the skin because you want perfect results at the end of the editing process so I'll just come and paint on only the model skin just like that so you can zoom into the image if at all you want your painting to be nice and precise. So I'll use Ctrl plus on the keyboard to zoom into the image and make sure that I have painted every area that has or contains skin in this very image. So reduce on the size to work on a smaller area and just come and paint. I hope you can see how we are able to get this nice and golden color on the skin tone. So don't mind if at all it is looking oversaturated because I'll show you in a bit how you can easily correct that issue. So just come to the head area and also paint. So if I told you make a mistake, you can always switch the brush back to black. So by the way, before painting, make sure you have black and white on these color swatches. So if I told you had any other random color and if I told the brush is not painting, as you wish you can simply press d on the keyboard or you can reset to have black and white and with white as a foreground color you can switch between black and white so if i told you make a mistake make the brush black and you can erase that mistake from a given area so I'll simply paint once again using our white brush to color grade the skin so right now the skin has now been color graded but if at all the effect is too much for your liking you can just come and simply come the opacity and simply reduce on the opacity to your liking so i'll just go with a very nice and low opacity of around 63 is okay so this is the before color grading after before after so let's add some contrast to your skin come to selective color and come and simply select blacks and simply 
take up the blacks just like that and that is going to add contrast to the image so after doing that let's do a little bit of eye whitening so just come to the hue and saturation adjustment layer come to mask and make sure you take out the saturation from the image around negative 75 with the white layer mask selected simply press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard to invert the effect zoom into the image by using ctrl plus or you can use command plus on the keyboard then simply paint in the white area of the eye so you can use the same method for eye and teeth whitening so i'm just going to come and paint on the white area to reveal the whitening effect so after retouching and color grading this image this is what we have so this is the image before after before after so after doing that anything is going to be saving the very image so just come right here to file export and come to export as so just want to save a sharp image that won't change in color when we save print it out or when we post it on social media so just come right here to export as and it's going to open up this window right here and it's also going to load the photo in this dark window so in order to export the image make sure the format is set to jpeg and quality at 100 percent and make sure you check the options right here color space and embed color profile you check the second the two options and simply change the sample to by cubic sharper jpeg quality at 100 percent and simply hit export and it's going to enable you choose a location where you want to save the image and after saving the image simply it is going to simply close this window so this is how you can easily edit a photo in photoshop from the very start to the very end and if i told you have enjoyed this simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if i told you are watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and seeing yet more videos on this channel and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating